Hey everybody, it's Blaze here and I'm back for a brand new Game Maker tutorial. Now, this tutorial is not about um, my old series. Uh, well, it's an ongoing series, my RPG for Beginners series, but this video is not for that. In fact, that file is off in the new city that I will be living in. Uh, yes, that is correct. I am moving between cities. And the whole reason why I have been away from YouTube for as long as I have been is actually because I am moving between cities and I have a whole bunch of other things that need to be done. For example, I have been doing a few uh, contract jobs for other people and also been working on my voice acting. So if anything sounds different about me, it is because I have been practicing and I'm just finished. I've actually just finished a different character. So um, let's get on with the tutorial. This tutorial will actually be about using one button combos. Now I'm unfolding all the folders that we will need, but this is essentially what the game will look like. Um, if we just let that load up, <laughs> just give me a second. Here we go, okay. So here we go, we have our little sprite character and if I press space, I'll play one animation press it again, it plays a different one, and press it a third time, it plays a third animation. Now it goes back to the start, and so that's all nice. Uh, and everything's timed right, all the animations play properly, but for this project, if you want to follow along, you can just grab yourself four sprites, one being an idle sprite, combo step one, uh, two, and three, which I have numbered zero, one, and two. Now, you will also need a, obviously, an object. Hopefully you guys all know exactly how to do these things. And of course, you need a room to test your object in. Don't worry if any of these concepts that I have here for you today are strange or they don't look familiar. Uh, you can pause the video. I will give you guys time to view this. But if you guys want me to explain anything, leave a question or your comments in the section below because that is the only way that I will know that you are struggling. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Now, the first thing here is in the create event, I set the image speed to 0.2. So obviously um, most people would be familiar with image speed and that is essentially controlling how fast um, the sprite plays. Then we have a Boolean value here for if we can attack or not. Um, that will, all of this will become clear uh, later um, in the step event. And then we have an array for our uh, combo animations. If you have more, um, if you have a longer combo, then you just keep adding to it. So say I had a combo part three, then I would add that in, then do some stuff, do stuff, GH, GH, GH. But seeing as I only have three, um, animations for my combo, we're going to keep it nice and simple and basic, um, then this is probably the max that you will need. Three hit combo and then it resets. And then our combo count, again, uh, this will all become clear in the step event and I will explain it to the best of my abilities then. Um, but for now, just uh, I'm just going to say that the combo event, uh, the combo count, uh, will tell us which of these animations to play. And then we have an idle sprite, um, which is what we'll revert back to uh, when we revert back to it. All right, let's go to this step event. Now this is where everything happens. Okay, so we're checking for, the first thing that we're gonna check for is input, obviously. We're gonna check if we have pressed the space key, which we have done and I've shown you that. Um, and then here in the if statement, we, it's quite long. We have, we're going to check if we have pressed the attack key, if we can attack, and if our combo count is less than the number of values in the array. So not the actual number here, so not two. We have three, actually. We have one, combo zero, one, and two. Remember that with uh, computers, all counting starts at zero and finishes at nine. It doesn't go to, it doesn't start at one. It goes to 10. 10 values is 10 minus 1, essentially. Uh, so I have 3. So as long as our combo count is less than 3, 
then everything inside this if statement, this very large, very long if statement, or, well, it's not very large, it's not very long, it's just a long-ish if statement, will run. Now, inside of it, I have um, a switch statement. Inside the if, I have a switch. And the switch statement basically tells us to change our sprite using sprite index according to the combo uh, count. So in the switch statement, we're checking what the value of the combo count is. And if it's zero, it will tell us to play um, combo count zero because at this stage, combo count is still at zero here. And so that means that it will play combo V combo zero. That's the animation that will play. And then we'll spawn the, coll the collider and whatever the collider does will do its thing. It's separate from the player. And then we will uh, play the sprite um, index. We'll do the same thing for each and every single case. So if combo count equals one, then it will play combo one. So for V combo one. Again, for if combo count equals two, it's two. Now you could say, why not just have if statements instead? Well, that's true. I could use if statements, but if I explain it, this tutorial will go on for much longer than it needs to. So if you guys want me to have, if you want me to explain the difference between if statements and switch statements, then uh, leave a request in the comments section below and I will make a video based off of that. The next thing that we're going to do, and this might be um, unfamiliar for uh, some of you, is I flip the bull. Um, so we go from, we start with can attack as true, but now I'm saying that can attack is the opposite of that. So if we have it like this, if we have this can attack equals not can attack, we're essentially telling it to say, now you're false. If you want to just make it a safeguard, if you just want to say, hey, I just want to set it to false and make sure that it's false, then just writing false is fine. Um, but because, um, the scope of this tutorial is kind of small. Um, I don't really have many other factors that will affect my attack, so I just flip it. But don't worry, you can just say false here. It's perfectly all right. It's the same, it's the same result. <clears throat> then we add one to the combo count. Now, if we have this combo count plus plus at the top, um, then it will play uh, sprite one instead of sprite, combo sprite one, sorry instead of combo sprite two. And we want to actually change the value after we have played the sprite and done the animation, the collisions and everything. But the most important part is to actually reset the animation. We need to make sure that the animation starts at um, zero. So let's see what happens if we remove that and we play the game. Um, if we remove it, basically what will happen is it will play the animation at um, based on what the previous frame or the previous animation was at. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to press space and it's just going to play random frames um, or seemingly random frames. The only reason why it's working now is because I'm timing everything. But you can see that it's sort of kind of glitching at times. That's because I'm not telling it to reset the animation. So this line is actually really important if you want the animation to play in its entirety, this very line here at the bottom. Now that's it for step. That's all it is for the combo, or at least at this stage. The next thing is to actually re um, is to actually allow the player to attack again. So if we can attack, so if not can attack, or another way to write that is if can attack equals equals false. That's the other way to do it. Um, but if not can attack then we switch back to the idle briefly. You don't have to have this line in if you're doing it uh, yourself. If you're doing it on your own, you're doing your own version, you don't have to have this line. You can just tell it to actually equal the, you can have it pause at the end of the animation. Um, but then you can also, the next line, this one is actually important. This one, we're flipping the bull again. So remember when we pressed it, we said that it goes from true to false. Now we're telling it to go back to true. Flip bull back to true. 
That's essentially what we're doing. Again, if your project is a lot larger, you can just simply say true. And I will just put a note here that this is optional, optional. Um, but for me, just having a flip it, flip the ball back to true, can attack. Um, that's enough for me at this stage. But remember, we're just setting it to true. That's what's important to get out of this line here. Now here we have a, another check. Um, and this basically resets our combo counter back to zero. So if our combo count is uh, at three or more, then we're going to reset it at the end of the animation. Let's see what happens if we cut that out. So if I cut that part out of the animation, here is exactly what's going to happen. I'm just gonna wait for that to load. What will actually happen is that it will play the animations, I think, but it won't go back to idle. So here we go. We're at this animation. If you have a look at the combo count there, we played the first one. We're now at combo count one. We just played number two and we played number three, but look at how number three is stuck there. It doesn't reset. And so I'm pressing space key like a madman now um, and nothing's actually happening. That's because at the end of the animation, we need to reset that and make sure that we can attack again. Because remember in the step event, we're checking to see if the combo count is less than the array length. So that's what you need to be able to do. You need to be able to attack again, and the best place to do that would be to reset the combo at the end of the final animation. Now that's it for this tutorial. This is the most basic level of it. Now there is one thing that I'm missing, and I've left it out deliberately because of the way that I'm programming uh, this combo system or this game that I'm working on in general. And that is of course a timeout for the combo. Obviously if you have a three-step combo, or any combo in general, you want to be able to cancel it somehow. So the easiest way would be to use alarm and then, I don't know, 30 or the better idea, the better way to do it would be room speed. But the thing about what I'm doing for my combo system is I'm not actually using the uh, room speed. I'm trying to make it um, frame rate or room speed independent by using delta time. So I'm not going to show that. Uh, for this video anyway. If you are interested in seeing um, my timing uh, system, then leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm probably going to make a video on it anyway, um, but if, you're, if you really want to see one, then just tell me. Um, and so I'm going to now give you guys time to have a look at this code. So you can pause the video here, or pause at any given time really, um, and I will try to cram as much of this in as possible without covering anything else. Um, so here's the create event, here's the step event, and the animation end event. Let me just cram these in, and I will give you time to pause it, and so you can copy it, you can try to decipher, decipher some of the code, not decipher, decipher some of the code. Um, and if you have questions, of course, don't be afraid to ask. So here we go. Uh, here's all the code that I'm using. Um, so you can pause it here. I'll give you about two seconds. Pause it now. Okay, so awesome. That's the end of our tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, you want me to explain something a little bit more, then don't be afraid to ask um, because really that's the only way that I can help you guys. And that's all for this tutorial. That's, that's it, a simple combo system. The only thing that you would have to do yourself outside of this would be to add that combo timeout uh, system, which shouldn't be too hard, um, hopefully. And if you guys need my help, then leave a comment in the comment section below. This video has gone on for quite a while, so I'm hitting almost 15 minutes. And, and so I'll end it here. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys like the content, then you know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel to help it grow. This is a new thing for 2017. Um, and so I wanna try and upload things uh, every, mm, at least once a month, up to twice a month. And then once the channel grows or keeps growing, uh, and that will be all thanks to you guys, of course. Um, as the channel grows, then I'll probably do more videos more frequently. 
But until then, uh, that's all for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you later. Bye.